An emotional journey took the first responders from downtown Minneapolis to the medical examiner's office in Minnetonka. Their caskets draped in American flags were carried into vans outside the hospital as a crowd of law enforcement stood to salute them. Doctors, nurses, and other Hennepin healthcare staff lined up in the skyway to see them off. Police, fire, and paramedic vehicles stayed close as the vans departed downtown. As the caravan made its way west, Minnesotans lined the route to pay their respects. Firefighters saluted first responders from an overpass. As the procession approached Minnetonka, families stood solemnly on the side of the street. When they reached the medical examiner's office, the escort didn't end at the entrance. The group walked in alongside the fallen first responders, so they were never alone. Back in Burnsville, neighbors are trying to make sense of what happened just steps from their homes. Our team coverage continues now with Mariel Mose. She's live in that neighborhood tonight after speaking with some of those families. Al? Well, Derek, there's been a growing memorial within the last couple hours you can see behind me here. No messages are written, but it's symbolism that speaks volumes. You can see black and blue balloons along with a, a black poster with a thin blue line through it. This is symbolism we've seen often that just represents the sa ultimate sacrifice that law enforcement make in the line of duty, which is certainly something that happened here overnight where two Burnsville police officers lost their lives along with a Burnsville fire paramedic. You can also see a Rosemount squad car behind me. This shows you that agencies outside of the city of Burnsville came out here to help out and give aid in this situation. I spent the day talking to neighbors in this area who told me that they woke up to gunfire. I heard or looked out my window because the window's right above here and it sounded like it was right where that 20 mile per hour sign is at. Jason Skog said he started to see a large police and SWAT presence in his Burnsville neighborhood around 2 in the morning but said things escalated three hours later at 5 a.m. I heard it a large explosion which I chalked up right away to a mortar going off like a firework but uh, then uh, like a minute later I heard another one followed shortly thereafter by a series of gunfires really rapid like doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, and then I knew right away that something bad was taking place. Skog didn't know exactly where the shooting was coming from but knew it was close to his house. Shortly thereafter we got a phone call from the police department to shelter in place. And this this is a tragedy. Dylan Foline lives in this neighborhood too. He's a father of two shaken by what happened especially after learning that a family was barricaded in the home at the time of the shooting. You know, I, I have to now explain to my daughter what happened today, and um, I mean, it's it's just the thought of those kids. That's that's what really hits home to me, um, and my heart goes out to the family of the responders. Now, I'm standing on the corner of 33rd Avenue. Down this street behind me is the home where this shooting took place overnight, and it's barricaded off still. No one can go through except for law enforcement and other people who have homes on this street. It's been that way since this morning. It's still that way 12 hours, more than 12 hours after the fact, showing you that the BCA is really combing through this crime, active crime scene. It's a very thorough investigation, Derek. Okay, thank you, Al. Here are some of those details that came from the press conference today. This all happened on 33rd Avenue South. Authorities say an armed man was barricaded with family members. When authorities arrived, the situation escalated into gunfire, the city says. The gunman killed Elmstrand, Rugi, and Finseth and injured another officer who is expected to survive. The suspect was reported dead at 8 this morning. Authorities say seven young children were inside the home between the ages of 2 and 15. They made it out safely. One other police officer, Sergeant Adam Medlicott, was injured. He is expected to survive.